Okay, so for the last example, we're going to look at idle. Now we all know that we want a consistent and steady idle, and we're going to be able to achieve that using the different kinds of control. Now, the output for uh, our particular idle solenoid that we're trying to use is going to differ. Some might be a stepper motor, some might be a duty cycle percentage, but the ECU is going to output a signal to alter our idle control motor that's going to bleed air, uh, increase or decrease the amount of air that's getting bypassed from our throttle plate. So you can think of the idle control motor as simply a controlled vacuum leak. So if we want to have a higher idle speed, we're going to induce more of a vacuum leak with this solenoid and bypass our throttle plate. And if we went less, we're going to decrease that vacuum leak and we're going to lower the idle speed. So it's a fairly simple concept. Now in an open loop style idle control, we're simply going to have a basic table that's going to have a percentage output that's associated with that particular idle speed. So if we say, hey, you know what, I want to run 900 RPM, it's going to look at this lookup value and it's going to say, I'm going to output that particular value. So 900 RPM, I'm going to look up in the table here, I'm going to spit out this value and that's going to be what I'm going to run. But the problem with using open loop style control on idle is that we know our idle is going to change. So if we're coming to a light, our idle might want to stall down if we have a light flywheel. Uh, or if we're uh, coming down to a stop, the, idle, the deceleration into the idle, we're going to have um, some situations where it might dip. So we're going to want to have something more to control the idle speed because simply just using an open loop style duty control uh, table is going to probably not give us that exact uh, desired target idle RPM that we want. 